When we talk about the arm action, this is really key for a successful cross-country ski movement. Common errors is that the shoulders stay pointing forward, so the arms reach back, but they won't be able to reach back very far. Watch how rounded that shoulder is and how far forward it is near my, near my neck. Especially when the arm goes back. When the arm goes back, the shoulder rolls forward. It doesn't feel really good. See how I'm trying to reach back, but my shoulder's rotated forwards. So it's not, it's not really powerful. You're not going to be very powerful in that position. And the issue with keeping people's bodies facing forward the whole time is I can't get the full range of motion with my upper body. So torso rotation and arm range of motion go together. Now, I really like people to do what they do to the front of their bodies to be equal to what they do to their the back of their bodies and to get that maximum stretch that they can possibly get from one arm to the other. So to do that, we've got to allow the torso to rotate. And we want to look at the rear arm as we perform the cross-country ski. It looks like underneath the work, fingers are open, got that bounce off your toes. So that the whole body ends up in that position. So my shoulders roll back, my arms are reaching back. Now, that's also a little tricky to demonstrate on land because we tend to want to, when we demonstrate on land, we go forwards, forwards, forwards. And therefore, if you want to demonstrate with the rotation, it looks a bit like this. It's huge. It's really big. And it's, that's quite intense. So what you might want to do if you're not in that sort of, you know, oh, I don't want to jump like that. And look, you know, there's days I want to jump like that. And there's days that there's no spring left, right? If I had a terrible night's sleep. So I've got my ankle frame. I demonstrate the feet. I get the legs going. And then I say, now add the arms. And I want you to look at the rear arm as you rotate. So I want you to turn your head and look at the back arm. And what I want you to do is see if you can get your arm equal distance behind you as what you just reached out in front. Don't need to worry about getting them to make sure their arm reaches out in front as far as their arm goes back. It's more about the rear arm. And the best thing about this is it will ensure that they get a longer stride as well. So you want this big rebounding action with the legs spreading out and getting that real spring effect. The arms also help with that spring effect. So you're getting that maximum stretch. When we talk about spring effect, we're talking about something that's elastic. Our body has elasticity, not just in the muscles, but mainly in the fascia. So once you pull on that elastic force, the more you pull on it, the more bang you've got for your buck. You're going to really spring up. And therefore, my heart rate goes up higher because I'm maximizing on the number of muscle groups that are going to be active. And I'm going for range of motion and stretch. This can only be done in the pool. You know, it's one of those sorts of environments that allows us to do things that just just simply not possible on land.